Hello from Dendrite Digital in Anaheim. Makers of the Virtue Data Processor. And Zipbits, the website made entirely of human readable JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So here is uh, the seven segment displays displaying hexadecimal. Here's the A key, A key down, A key up, B key down, B key up, uh, C key down, C key up. So it's not ASCII, it's got, a, got its own key codes. And then uh, here's the enter key, or the return key on Mac. And here's a key up of the enter key. There's also another enter key on the numeric keypad. And uh, you'll see that it's got the EO prefix. And then when that goes up, you can see that the EO gets shifted, shifted left. And the FO for the key up command comes right after that EO and then followed by the key code, the specific key. That's the that's the alphanumeric keyboard uh, return or enter. And here's enter on the numeric keypad. So uh, we're gonna go over this in Verilog and uh, when I get this working the way I want, I'm going to put it on a on a screen with a VGA or maybe a HDMI 720p. So I get uh, on 720p I get 80 characters by 45 characters. So uh, here's the top level keyboard, and here's the uh, 100 megahertz system clock. Here's the uh, PS2 clock, PS2 data, and uh, the seven segment display, and each of the um, eight display segments uh, with its own anode. So a common anode for the seven segments. And you'll notice I left out the decimal point I don't need it yet. So then uh, we have uh, 32 bits of data, 32 bits of hold, and we have uh, eight bits for the key, and then uh, flag I'm using to determine when a character's been uh, updated, and uh, it just pump it it uh, raises the flag high when it's done that, and then when it drops it low, like, uh, yeah, see, uh, when it, when the flag, uh, is positive, it sets hold to zero. And so after hold has gone by, uh, 10,000, uh, then, uh, it, while it's less than 10,000, it adds one to it. And I don't want it wrapping around, so I I stop it at ten thousand. But when it's at forty five hundred, that's when it updates the key code. So flag goes high, hold goes to zero. It starts counting up here, and then when it hits uh, forty five hundred, uh, it it updates the key code. And the uh, reason I'm using 4500 is because the uh, clock period for the PS2 is uh, uh, 25 megahertz. And so if you divide uh, 100,000 or 100 million by 4,000, you get 25 megahertz or 25 kilohertz. So uh, it just shifts the uh, new value, and for the key, 
into this data. And then uh, here's the PS2 uh, transmitter or, or receiver, PS2 receiver. And here I have uh, uh, four bits of counter, eight bits of current data, error, parity, uh, pre-clock. So the, the clock the clock that was before this one so I can compare them and, and uh, click it in and then uh, ticks so uh, here as as uh, the 100 megahertz clock ticks to 4000 then uh, ticks is reset to zero and uh, we start uh, checking for for the data so every time it ticks ticks by uh, 25 kilohertz, it uh, checks this, and if if uh, the clock is is uh, if the clock is low, the PS2 clock is low, and the pre clock clock is high, then it knows it's got a new bit, and it uh, looks at the counter. And uh, it's going to clock count each of these cycles. And uh, on cycle one, it, there's nothing that happens. It just goes. It just goes low. And then uh, the second one, we get the first bit, the zero bit. Next one, we get the one bit, the two bit, the three bit, all the way to eight bits total. 0 through 7, 8 bits, and all the while it's it's updating the parity bit. If they're both 1 and 0, if they're both 0 at 0, if if they're different, it becomes uh, an uh, inverted value. And that way uh, you can do the parity bit. And then on, on the 10th cycle, uh, flag is going to be set to one and if the parity uh, is not equal to the data then we have an error condition and then if it if it's not an error then the flag goes low again and um, we can see here we we initialized it to zero uh, and if there's no error uh, it drops to zero goes from high here to low there. It's just one cycle. So then if counter equals one, uh, we're gonna, um, we're gonna uh, check it with the uh, zero data for uh, zero on the data line. And then counter equals two huh. counter equals two parity equals one so that's for, that's setting it up for the next one and then error equals zero so uh, we initialize the zero flag to, to uh, zero here and uh, so no error regardless of if there was an error or not. And then here the counter, uh, if it's greater than or equal to two, if it's greater than or equal to two, then uh, uh, while the counter is less than 11, you're gonna add one to it. And uh, then counter uh, else if 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 this if statement doesn't succeed if this statement doesn't succeed then it's going to set the counter to one and that's going to be this this initial uh, clock cycle and then uh, pre clock you can see that it's updating pre clock to be the last value that the uh, PS two had 
So I've worked with this for a little bit, and uh, it seems to work fine. You saw it working on the on the FPGA board, the Nexus 4 that I have. And then uh, here uh, we have the when the flag goes low, on a negative edge of the flag going low, here on cycle 11, then uh, it puts the current data, which is these eight bits here, puts the current data into the key, and the key goes out as the next uh, key code. And so uh, the flag, the flag is used here again. You can see uh, I'm I'm checking the flag if it's if it's high, then it's got a new a new value to do, and uh, it'll it'll uh, if it goes high, then uh, it zeroes the hold, and then as it's counting, uh, it'll hit 4,500 and uh, put the key into the data, and then uh, hold will continue to uh, 100 or 10,000. So uh, that's the keyboard stuff. Uh, I went over this in a previous segment for the seven segment display. We got all the uh, segment data and we're just cycling through the digits, displaying the data. And then the hex display is all, all done up uh, the correct way. We've, uh, we've fixed uh, the uh, e code it used to be on the other side, like three right here.